Hello. In this video, I'll cover the basics of UI modding, such as adding buttons, pop-ups, and toggles, as well as a practical example. If you don't already have the SDK set up, I've linked a tutorial in the description on how to do so. So the first thing you're going to want to do is install the DevTools mod. And restart your game. Now, depending on which platform you're on, you're going to press F11 on Windows, F10 on Mac, or the More Games button in the bottom right on Android. And that will open up this menu. You'll see in the top left we have the scene, and if you click to expand that, and you'll see menu layer. Under that, you'll see all these things. As I hover over them, you'll see it's highlighting stuff on the right. So when you want to add an element to an existing menu, you can use this to figure out where that should be. So here you see this says menu layer, so I know that's the class I want to modify. And then if I want to put the button say down here, I can hover over saying on the right, I find it. So it's the bottom menu. And then you can see all the buttons that are in there. And so the text right there is the ID, which I can use to access the menu and code. Now, if I go into here, I press F11 again, take a look. You'll see this is the creator layer. And you'll see that we don't get any of the nice IDs in here. And all the buttons are just here, and there's no easy way to get them. So that's where node IDs comes in. So now with node IDs installed, if I open it up again, you can see that we get all the nice IDs here. So if I wanted to say, add a button to this big group of buttons, I can see it's the creator buttons menu. Or if I want to put a button, say in the top left, I could add it to the exit menu. So here I have a very basic setup. I'm just hooking menu layer in it. And I'm gonna add a button to the bottom menu that I showed earlier that just creates a pop-up when clicked. So for most basic buttons that you just click and it does something, you want to use a CC menu item sprite extra. Then you can call create. And then first you're going to put the sprite. So in this case I'm going to use a CC sprite. And then create sprite with frame name lets you use a sprite from a sprite sheet. So I'm just going to do what the Geo tutorial mod does and use the like button. Then the target, uh, in most cases, is just going to be this. And then you need to make the callback. So I'm going to define a function down here. It's going to be on my button. And it's going to take a CC object as a parameter. And so here, to set the callback, I'm going to use menu selector. And inside of that, my menu layer on my button. And my menu layer is just the name I set up here. Now when you're adding something to an existing menu, it's generally a good idea to give it an ID. So you can say my button that ID. So I can just give the ID of my button. And if you're adding it to something from the base game, you should add underscore SPR. And what that does is it prefixes your mod ID. Now to add it to the menu, we need to first get the menu. So there's four main ways to get a node. The first and most common is get child by ID, where you just put in the ID and you get it. If you need to get something that's nested several nodes deep, you can use Query Selector to do that efficiently. If your node doesn't have an ID, then you have two options. You can either use get children followed by object at index, which will give you the child at the given index of a node. However, DevTools does not always show the order of nodes properly. You can also use get child by type and give it a type and an index. So say you give it CC menu and zero, it'll give you the first CC menu or say CC menu item sprite extra and three, it'll give you the fourth CC menu item sprite extra. So we can do that by saying this, get child by ID. And if you remember earlier, the ID for the menu on the bottom was bottom dash menu. Now to add the button to the menu, you can do menu add child, the button, and then you can call menu update layout, and that will organize all the buttons in a nice row. And to make our button actually do something, we can go down here. And I'm going to make it show a basic pop-up. So for that, you can use an FL alert layer and call create. And then the first parameter is the title and then a description. And then whatever text you want up here on the button. So I'm just going to put OK. And then you can call show. So now if we build this mod and launch the game, now we have a like button down here. And if we click it, it says all the stuff we just put in there. You can click OK to close it. Now, if you want to make a pop-up with a couple options, like a confirmation that does something when you click the button, then you can use geode 
create quick pop-up. So first the title and description, and then whatever text we want on the first button and the second button, and then we can put a function here. So this takes in an FL alert layer as the first parameter, and then a boolean, which is true if you've clicked the second button as the second parameter. And then what I'll do for this is I'll just have it log info, and I'll have it log the value of selected. So if I click on it, we get the pop-up as our two buttons. And if I click OK, and then check the console, which you can enable by going to Geode, Settings, and under Developer Settings, Show Platform Console, I just want to enable that. You'll see it said selected true. Now if I click cancel and take a look at the console, it says false. Now the reason why I put cancel first and OK second is because if I close out this menu by pressing escape, you'll see that it logged false. So when you press escape, it'll act as though you press the first button. Now if you only want to have one button, you can just set the text for the second button to no pointer, and then it'll only show the one button. All right, so now I'm gonna make a toggle. So for a toggleable button, you're going to use a CC menu item toggler. And we're going to call create with standard sprites, which will make just a regular checkbox you see all around the game. So for the target, put this, for the callback, we'll get to that, and scale, I'll just do one. Uh, and now we can make void on my toggler. Again, takes in a CC object, and then we can put menu selector on my toggler, and then give this an ID and add it to the menu. Okay, so now I'm actually going to give this parameter a name, I'm just going to call it sender. And so this CC object that's being passed is this toggler, and in the other case, the button. So to get the state, we need to cast the CC object to a CC menu item toggler. And then we can call is toggled. However, this callback gets called before it changes the toggle state, so the actual state is going to be the opposite of that. And now we can have it log the state. So now at the bottom we have this checkbox, and if I turn it on and off and on and off, and take a look at the console, you'll see it says true, false, true, false. So now I'm going to give just a basic practical example of UI modding. So let's say you're playing a level, and you want to rate the stars, but you want to know what the creator suggested. So you have to click this info button, this info button, then you can see the request your rate, and then you have to go all the way back and click it. And that's annoying. So I'm just going to make a basic thing that highlights the correct rating button. So to figure out what to modify, we can open DevTools. And we'll see that the pop-up is a rate stars layer. So that's the class we're going to modify. And unfortunately, Node IDs doesn't provide IDs for this, so it's going to be a little more annoying to do, but still possible. So we see that there's a CC layer here, and then there's a menu that has all of these buttons. And then inside of the buttons, we have the button sprite, which has a CC scale 9 sprite, which is the background. And then the CC label BM font, which is just the text label. So I'm thinking to show it, we could just change the color of it. And DevTools also allows you to mess with whichever node you have selected. So you can change the text or the color or even move it around. So to start off, we want to include the rate stars layer and modify the class. And we want to hook the init function. So if it fails to initialize, we'll return false, and at the end, return true. And now in here, we first need to get the level. So to get the level, we can use game level manager get get saved level, which takes in a level ID, which we can see is a member of this class. Then we can get the requested stars. Now, if the level requested less than or equal to zero stars or greater than 10 stars, which shouldn't be possible, but can happen, then we just want to stop here. Otherwise, if you recall, the first thing inside of the rate stars layer was just a CC layer. And for law pop-ups, it's like that, and you can access that with main layer. Then there was a CC menu inside of that, and since it didn't have an ID, we can get it via get child 
by type. And so we put the type here. We want the CC menu. And then we want the first one. So for the index, we put zero. And then inside of that, we want to get the button corresponding to the search requested. That was the CC menu item sprite extra. And we want requested minus one. Then inside of that, there was a button sprite. And inside of that button sprite was the label. And finally, we can set the color of the label to green. So what we're doing here is we're modifying the ray stars layer. We're getting the main layer. Then inside of that, we're getting the first CC menu. Inside of the CC menu, we're getting the button corresponding to the search requested. And we're getting the sprite. And then inside the sprite, the label. And then setting the color of the label to green. If we go to recent level, click on this we'll see that it's highlighted. So it's highlighted two, we can check that they requested two. And here, three, and it requested three. In my next tutorial, I'm gonna cover more advanced UI modding, and I'll try not to procrastinate for six months this time.